What's up everyone and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Command Block video. In this video we're going to be looking at how to set up an NPC store. That is an NPC that sells you whatever items you want for whatever denominations you want. For this video we're going to be using diamonds as payment but it's really easy to switch the diamonds for whatever you want your payment or your money to be. A single NPC can sell up to six different things, that is six different blocks or six different denominations of the same block. If you have the payment in your inventory and you click on one of the selections, it will exchange your payment for the designated item. For this example, I made all of the selections cost a single diamond. So if I have a bunch of diamonds in my inventory, anytime I click on one of the selections, it will remove a single diamond from my inventory and then give me the programmed amount of the item that I clicked on. All of this is really easy to change. I'll be showing you how to change the cost of the item as well as how many items you receive. So basically the way this works is that each selection has three command blocks. But before we jump into what exactly these command blocks do, I would like to say that I recommend placing the command blocks directly underneath your NPC. The reason for this is that the command blocks are going to use the target at P, which selects the closest player. And so since we're targeting the closest player, we want the player to be as close to the command blocks as possible. But now let's jump into how to build this and how exactly it works. First off, we need to summon us an NPC to sell us things. We do this by typing in slash summon NPC. So slash summon space NPC. This will summon an NPC directly under where you're at. And so now if we're in creative mode and we press interact on the NPC, it will bring up this box that allows us to change all of the NPC settings. We can name the NPC whatever we want to, we can edit the dialogue right here, and I recommend writing your prices in this text box right here because you won't have very much room to write stuff in the selection boxes. So just as an example, we're going to write stone 64 for one diamond. Now of course you can change your pricing or your quantities or any of that stuff. But next up, you can change the appearance of your NPC in this selection right here. These don't make any sort of difference, it's just cosmetic. But then if we click on advanced settings, we can click add command. And this is where you can add commands to your NPC. But before we do that, we need to figure out exactly where our command blocks are going to be. If you don't know how to get a command block, you have to type in the slash give at self command block command. So slash give at s command underscore block. This will give you a command block. And like I mentioned earlier, I recommend placing your command blocks directly underneath the NPC, that way it's as close to the player as it can be, but for this example, we're just going to build it right here. So start off by placing three command blocks with the arrows pointing into each other, like so, and then we need to figure out what the coordinates for this block right here is going to be. So this block right here that's going to be touching the farthest back command block. I like to find coordinates by typing in set block or fill and then having the auto fill tell me the coordinates for the block that I'm staring at. But you can always just stand there and figure out exactly what those coordinates are. Once we figure out what the coordinates are, come back to your NPC and we're going to type in slash set block and then those coordinates for where that block is and then redstone underscore block. So slash set block space coordinates space redstone underscore block. And then we're going to make sure that button mode is on. Button mode is what adds the selection box to the NPC's menu so that you can click on the button named stone and it will give you stone. Now we can add up to six commands in the NPC. So if you want to sell up to six items, that is totally doable. But first, let's finish up this first command to see exactly what we're going to be doing. But really quick, let me just show you. Now if you click on edit dialog, it will add the stone button right here. So clicking this button will activate the command that you put in. So it should spawn a redstone block in the coordinates that you set. Summoning that redstone block is actually what activates these command blocks. In the very first command block that the redstone block is going to be touching, it needs to be set to impulse unconditional needs redstone. And we're going to type in the command slash set block those same coordinates for where that redstone block is being summoned, but we're going to type in air this time. So slash set block coordinates air. So essentially what this is going to be doing is placing the redstone block and then immediately deleting it. So now if we click on edit dialog, click on our stone button, it should place a redstone block and immediately delete it. You can double check this by seeing if this command block says block placed. And now moving on to our last two command blocks. The one in the middle is going to be a chain command block set to unconditional always active. So chain unconditional always active. And we're going to type in the command slash clear at P 
And then whatever item you want to use as payment, in this case, we're going to type in diamond with a zero after it. The zero is the block state, basically. So basically diamond or emerald or anything like that is going to have a zero right after it. And then the number after zero is the quantity of your price. So one will remove one diamond, two will cost two diamonds, three will cost three diamonds, etc, etc. And now our last command block is also going to be a chain command block, but this one needs to be set to conditional. That's very important. It needs to be set to conditional. What conditional means is that the previous command block needs to have activated for it to activate. So chain conditional always active, and we're going to type in slash give at p, and then whatever item we want to give the player. So in this case, we're going to do stone 64. The 64 can be 128 for two stacks, or basically any number up to 30 stacks. And so because this last one is set to conditional, if the second one fails, meaning that if the player does not have the diamonds in their inventory, it will fail to remove them. And so if it fails, it will not give the player the item that you programmed. But if the player does have the correct payment in their inventory, then the slash clear command will succeed on removing it, thus triggering the conditional command block to slash give the player whatever item you told it to give them. So basically what is happening is the NPC summons a redstone block, which activates the command blocks. The first command block deletes that redstone block so that you can activate it over and over. The second command block then tries to remove the payment from the player's inventory. And if it succeeds, then the third command block gives the player the items. And so now to add multiple selections to your NPC, simply copy this process next to where you just built the other command blocks. So place three command blocks, figure out the coordinates for where the redstone block needs to be, then go back to your NPC, and then type in in the second command section, slash set block, those coordinates, redstone block. So since an NPC can have up to six commands, we can have up to six different items being sold. Or we can just do different denominations, or whatever you would like to do. But remember to turn on button mode, and name the button something unique, so that you know what each button will do. And so now, since we added a second button, if we go to edit dialog, the second button will pop up. So make sure that it summons the redstone block in the correct place, and then re-enter the commands. So this first one is simply going to delete that redstone block, needs to be impulse, unconditional, needs redstone, with the command slash set block, coordinates, air. So this will turn that redstone block back into air, essentially deleting it. And then our second one in the middle is going to be chain, unconditional, always active, and then we're going to type in the, the payment one, so slash clear, at player, and then the payment. So diamond or emerald, and then zero as the block state for that item, and then the quantity that you want the price to be. So in this case, we're going to do two on this one, just to show that it will remove two diamonds instead of one. And then our final command block is going to be chain, conditional, always active, with the slash give, at p, whatever item you want to give the player in exchange for the payment. And again, to reiterate, you can do this up to six times. So you can have six sets of three command blocks, giving the player different stuff in exchange for the same payment or different payments, all totally up to you. So this can be really helpful for adventure worlds or even just for survival worlds, for stuff that, you know, players don't really like to farm to sell to other players, especially things like blocks. You know, maybe you want to sell players blocks in exchange for their diamonds so they can build crazy stuff without anyone actually having to go collect all of those blocks. You know, either way, it's totally up to you. Really quick before we end this video, though, you don't even actually need the NPC. You can do this a slightly different way by deleting these two impulse command blocks and deleting your NPC, and then switching what used to be your middle command block, the slash clear one, into impulse needs redstone, and then simply attach a button to this command block, to where the button will send a redstone signal to this newly impulsed command block. So as an example, we're going to place buttons on these solid blocks right here. And so you can place signs above these buttons that tell the player what the button is trying to sell them. So now if the player has the payment in their inventory, it will work just the same. It will try to remove the payment, and then if it succeeds, it will give the player the item. So you can bypass the NPC entirely and just have the buttons being what sells you the stuff. Now, of course, if you don't have the payment in your inventory, then it won't activate the command block, and so it won't activate the give command. But that's all we got for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. And if you didn't, leave a comment and let me know why. I'm always trying to improve my video making, so your criticism might really help me out. And talk to me in the comments. Let me know what you use this for. I would love to hear what you're doing in your own worlds or your own realms. Personally, I've been trying to learn command blocks in preparations for an adventure realm. 
That is, a survival realm that has adventure aspects such as dungeons, quests, and games using command blocks, or really anything else that we can think of to improve the player's experience. Like this right here is a battleship game that I've been working on. Just like the regular battleship, you place your boats anywhere you want to, represented by those dirt blocks that I placed, and then when you place buttons, it will either hit or miss. If you get a miss, nothing happens, but if you get a hit, it will turn the block red and then delete part of the boat that you hit. I'm really excited to add sound effects and automated turn sequences and all that other good stuff. But since we're out of time, until next time, I've been your host, Omladu, hopefully teaching you a command block trick or two, and reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.